Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Wednesday, September 25th and now it's Hurricane Helene with 80 mile per hour winds. Central pressure has dropped now to 980 millibars or about 20 nine inches of mercury just a little bit below 29 inches of mercury and the storm is only expected to get stronger let's take a look at the forecast path first of all from the national hurricane center and there you have the broad picture of the tropical atlantic into the caribbean sea and gulf of mexico and here is the cone of expectation for the storm to travel uh, now just because you're not in the cone doesn't mean you're not going to have hurricane conditions i'm going to talk about that in just a moment but uh, let's zoom in on the cone itself there's the core of the storm over in the Straits of Yucatan. And by later on this evening, the uh, storm should be up to a Category 2 storm and then a Category 3, which is a major hurricane, winds of 115 miles per hour or more. And then by uh, tomorrow night at sunset, uh, the system is expected to be right around uh, 125 mile per hour wind speed. That's a strong Category 3, almost a Category 4, 100. 30, 31 miles an hour is a category four type storm. And then the uh, storm is expected to continue moving upward across the western portions of Georgia uh, into the northwest tip of Georgia, then into the Tennessee Valley. However, just because you, we're not in the cone of uh, the uh, forecast here, uh, the expectations of severe weather conditions is very high across the eastern portion of the storm itself. Let's look at some of the uh, watches and warnings across the uh, uh, southeast United States. And uh, right now we're seeing hurricane watches and warnings across a large portion of the uh, northern portion of Florida uh, into southwest Georgia. Yeah, southwest Georgia. You don't see a hurricane warning in effect for southwest Georgia uh, but uh, there we have it. Uh, there is a hurricane warning all the way up almost to Warner Robins uh, and into the Columbus area and north of uh, uh, just around the Columbus area. And uh, Tifton, Albany, uh, Waycross all are in a, a hurricane warning area, including Douglas and Coffee County. That means hurricane winds are anticipated in these areas. Uh, looking at the um, tropical storm uh, watches and warnings, all right, here we have the hurricane watches and tropical storm watches and a hurricane watch or a tropical storm warning. It covers all of southeastern Georgia and extreme southern portions of South Carolina uh, with a tropical storm watch in effect for central and northern Georgia, northwestern portions of the uh, South Carolina and western South Carolina, and even a small tip of North Carolina into the Asheville, North Carolina area. Tropical storm uh, watch is in effect. So uh, we're watching a lot of uh, storm activity. This is a very large, wide storm. That's why this is covering so many areas of the watches and the warnings. All right, let's take a look at the satellite imagery from this uh, uh, mid-afternoon. And there uh, is the Yucatan Peninsula right in this area here. There's the western tip of uh, Cuba. And this is the Straits of Yucatan. There's the uh, storm itself getting very well organized, very intense cloud top uh, cold temperatures indicating very severe lifting uh, going up with inside this storm. Looking at the visual satellite imagery there, you can see an eye trying to form. Uh, looks like an eye definitely is forming right now. Uh, and that indicates that the storm continues to grow in strength. I would imagine by the next advisory before I finish this video uh, that the uh, uh, hurricane will be close to a category two storm or near 100 mile per hour winds. Uh, all right, now looking at the sea surface temperature, that's the fuel that the storm is going to be using uh, as it uh, traverses across the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico. These water temperatures are very warm in the upper uh, 20s to lower 30s Celsius. That's mid to upper 80s on the Fahrenheit scale. And the warmer the water temperature, uh, the more energy the storm has to work with. And looking at the forecast model, uh, landfall is expected sometime tomorrow evening, uh, right around sunset, in and around near the Big Bend area of Florida. And that's gonna produce tremendous storm surge across this area because that's gonna be blowing the winds up uh, and the water pushing into this cove right over here. And that's uh, going to give that area perhaps a 10 to 15 foot storm surge. You add that to the tide, but their tides aren't that high in the Gulf of Mexico. But across the uh, coastal Georgia and South Carolina, we have a little bit higher tides here, but our tides aren't going to be that high because the moon, fortunately, is moving further away, heading toward what we call 
apogee. Last week it was at perigee, and we had a 9.2 foot tide. And if we had that with this system here, we would add two to three feet uh, to that. That would give us a 13 foot or uh, a 12 foot tide, which is bad. The, 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 the marshes fill up at around 9.6 feet. Once the tide gets above 9.6 feet, the marshes overflow and start flooding into the, uh, well, the homes and the streets and so forth in and around the tidal basins. However, the tide, uh, this uh, tide period, looking at the tide data, I got it over here, uh, is going to be around um, 413 tomorrow afternoon at the, at the peak of the high tide, 7.6 feet. So instead of a, uh, a, four, a 12-foot tide, we'll have 7 plus 2 is 9, 9.6. That's okay. That fills it to the top. But if it goes up to 3 feet, it would be a 10.6. A, a so some, some flooding could be occurring of uh, saltwater flooding. But we also are anticipating some moderate to heavy rains. All right, going back to the... Uh, uh, conditions here. Something else I wanted to show you, the broad area of this storm. You can see how wide it is. Uh, and it goes all the way out. Tropical storm force winds from the core of the uh, storm itself. At, at this position in time, the tropical storm force winds, in other words, winds in excess of 39 miles per hour, go all the way out to 250 miles to the northeast and to the southeast of the center of the storm. And that's a large storm. That's going to be pushing a lot of water and winds across the coastal Georgia into southern South Carolina. This area, as the storm moves northward, let's bring it a little bit further northward in the models here. Uh, this will be at uh, 2 o'clock on Thursday morning. And again, I mentioned this portion, the east side of the storm, and look how large it is. Uh, is the dirty side of the storm. That's where you have a lot of the convection and the threat for tornadoes. Uh, as the winds move on shore, as this will be uh, doing here, we'll have southerly winds and southeasterly winds moving on shore. Uh, as the higher winds from the ocean uh, encounter the land mass, uh, the winds slow down a little bit at the surface because of friction, but aloft, just by a couple thousand feet aloft, the winds are still flowing really hard, uh, perhaps uh, 30 miles per hour, even higher. That produces a shear that could produce uh, fast track tornadoes. So uh, the threat for tornadoes will be existing uh, because of this situation. And uh, with that being said, going back to this map here, the National Severe Storms Forecast Center or Storm Prediction Center, what they call it now, uh, is showing an enhanced area of potential tornado activity in the southeast Georgia and southern South Carolina region and all of uh, eastern South Carolina and all of southeastern Georgia and the northern half of Florida has a slight chance for these fast track tornadoes. Uh, so you have to keep an eye on uh, for that. And, and with this situation here, when you have uh, this type of configuration, you also have rain squalls. The squalls, and that's where you're going to find the fast track tornadoes, are brief periods of very heavy rains and very strong gusty winds. And some of those winds will be spinning up, and that's your fast track tornadoes. And you can have, you know, tropical storm force winds outside the uh, uh, rain bands and rain squalls of 35, 45, 50 miles per hour. But within those squalls, you could see some downburst winds of perhaps 70, 75 miles an hour and some updraft winds in those fast track tornadoes, 75 to 100 miles an hour. So you have to keep an eye out for that. And that's the, pos the problem that we're going to have Thursday night into early Friday morning across our region. All right, that's the wind. What about the rain? Well, most of the rain is going to be to the uh, center of the storm and to just to the west of the center of the storm. And the track of the storm you can see right here is it, supposed to be going up into the uh, western counties of all of Georgia, including the Atlanta metropolitan area over into Athens. And this golden area here, this is a forecast of uh, 10 to 14 inches of rain. Uh, Western Georgia is going to see anywhere between 4 to 8 inches of rain. In coastal Georgia and southern South Carolina, uh, I'm expecting to see two to three inches of rain across our region from uh, tropical, uh, tropical cyclone, okay, Hurricane Helene. All right, uh, so with all that being said, uh, you can get more information on my website. I'll have the radars all set up for the uh, monitoring of the storm itself. We're getting some uh, shower activity in the Savannah area right now. It has nothing to do with Helene. That's just a trough of low pressure that's moving on shore right now. I picked up already a little bit more than a, a third of an inch of rain, almost a half inch of rain so far uh, here right there at where it says 79 degrees uh, in my uh, weather uh, rain gauge. Anyway, uh, 
keep an eye on the weather. It could be very damaging conditions for tomorrow afternoon. I have more detailed information on my last video. If you want to see more about that, check out the last video I just posted yesterday uh, detailing uh, what to expect during the certain times of the day and the night and throughout the next several days as this storm approaches the region. So with that being said, uh, I'll keep you posted right here on my YouTube channel and on my webpage, savannapat.name. Bye.